We are Robin and Carla Allborn, the crazy old folk that took on the renovation of an abandoned hundred-year-old general store and gas station in one of the most remote areas of Arizona. This is Chapter 1 of the Before and After. So far, we have put in eight years of non-stop renovation to bring this piece of Americana history back to life. Through our years, we have taken on many renovations of different historic properties, but the renovation of the Hoagland store has been the most interesting and rewarding. The Hoagland store from the 1920s on was a major part of this small mountain community. Many of the old timers that are still alive have filled us with much history and many stories of the past. After the purchase of the store, the first day we walked through the doors, we knew this was going to be a special find. We could not believe our eyes. The store shelves were still stocked with items from the 1920s through the 1980s. It was as if you walked into a time capsule. Around every corner and every building, outside, buried on the property covered by a hundred years of dirt, we found unbelievable treasures of the past. In the early 1980s was when the store was locked up and abandoned to weather away in the Arizona sun. So join us on our journey with the before and after renovation of the historic Hoagland General Store and all the treasures that we found, and learn about the past and the future of this piece of Americana. Chapter 2 will be coming next, which will be preserving the history of the Hoagland Store, the previous owner, the people of the community it served for over a 100 years. Welcome, and we hope you enjoy the ride. Abandoned for many decades and located in one of the most remote areas in Arizona, locked up and full of treasures from the past was this 100-year-old general store and gas station. In 2015, we purchased this piece of history known as the Hoagland Store, named after Ray Hoagland, who owned and operated the store for over 50 years. So follow us on our old folk adventure as we find unbelievable treasures and as we bring the Hoagland store property back to life. This cabin was built in the 1940s by Ray Hoagland and was used to rent cow to cowboys that worked on the ranches in the area. As we go to this cabin at the top, this was the very first building on the property, which was built in 1913. In the background, you see the oil building, which stored the oil and the gas, which pumped it up to the 1920s tanks in the front of the store. As we walk to the old barn, you can see that it's in pretty bad shape. We're gonna try to save it, but we're not sure if it's really salvageable. As you can see, other buildings have collapsed and fallen in the background. There's lots of junk, lots of rusty gold, and lots of treasures to be found. You're now looking at the back entryway of the Hoagland store. As you can see, it's fallen down around itself. But once again, the treasures are abundant to find. As we move around here, 
you start to see these solid concrete formations. They're 12 inch thick solid walls and known as tunnels that go down into the ground. The community people through the years named them the dungeons because that's exactly what they look like and how it feels that you're in a dungeon when you go down there. As we come around the corner here, you see this beautiful rock building. This building was used years ago in the 1930s and 40s as the mail room. Where the mail came here, they sorted it, took it up to the store where the post office used to set. As we move around, once again, you can see all the junk laying around, but we found so many treasures as we cleaned up this property. In the foreground is the original old delivery truck that was driven to Globe every week to pick up supplies, oil, gas. There was the old loading dock that has fallen down. An outhouse crumbled to the ground. Another shed that used to be standing We noticed that the old delivery truck, the last time it was licensed was in 1973. Now we're walking around to the east side of the building. And now around to the front of the building. This, this area this area is where the old pumps sat. The two benches are the original benches that the old timers set. They were called the Spit and Whittler Club.
1913 cabin finished with our renovation Now we're coming back around to the back again. As you can see through the years, the way they kept the roof on was by throwing lots of old tires, car parts, car engines, anything heavy that might keep the tent on the building. Now we're coming across our junk pile. My husband has spent two weeks solid cleaning up the property and this is everything that's going to the dump. We have found many of really cool treasures but this is nothing we want to keep but as you can see We've accumulated quite a junk pile. We're saving all the old tin so that we can use it to renovate the property.
the after of the lean-to. All the tin re-screwed on to the top. Most of the junk that was holding the roof taken off. The back entryway here. Walking here on the front porch of the Hoagland store, these benches still here after a hundred years, where the old timers sat and whittled wood and told many a story. Their carved initials on the benches still there after all those years. These front doors open to many a pioneer family, coming for their mail or just to pick up everyday essentials. The store was stocked from floor to ceiling with anything you may want, from just a sewing needle to a wood-burning stove. A piece of Americana with so much history. In the background, you see the old tattered barn. This was the Hoagland Lumber Barn. This barn my husband tore down to salvage the wood and tin to use on the renovation of the store. We used every stitch of its wood and tin in the renovation. Okay. This is entering the Hoagland store for the first time. Just watch your step. For many years since this uh, has been open. So, here's one room. And this is where Ray Hoagland stayed? Either Ray or Glenn, I'm not really sure of the story. But uh, there's an old Victrola. I'm sure one of them listened to that. And, uh, kind of got our uh, work cut out for us. The pack rats have moved in. Yeah. Here's an old uh, 
little cupboard. Here's another cupboard. Has uh, quite a bit of stuff of their day. This was kind of the kitchen area here, I think. I guess that's one way to board up a window. Yeah. With old crates. <laughs> Here's where there was an old wood stove in here, so this looked like this was a two room living quarters. Ah, look at down here. Remember these little critters? I think they were 10 ounces. No, these were six and a half. So anyway. What's that room over there? Looks like to me it uh, was just a place where they kept uh, refrigerated products. Wow, look at this. Look at this old barbed wire. Ain't that uh, been around a little while? Wow. You can see the old jute knob wiring and then they came in with a little bit more modern day stuff. A little bit. <laughs> anyway. Here was Ray's old desk apparently. Yeah, this must here. have been the office area. Yeah. And uh... as we walk into the back door of the Holborn store, <coughs> this room oh. once was Ray Holborn's office. The door, the steel door that you see there, is solid concrete bunker which we use for storage of canned goods but as you see all the treasures that we've displayed that we found here in the store cowboy bathtubs old boxes food items old bottles. At one time there were th three rooms. This door here you walked into two other rooms. One was a makeshift kitchen. The other one was a bedroom but we had to uh, demolish them. They were just too far gone. So anyway, well now what we're going to do is we're going to open this door and this goes down into what everybody refers to what we understand as the, the dungeons. So I've heard that it, it's pretty junky. And notice here's a steel door and here's another steel door. Imagine that was to keep uh, thieves from prospering. Here's a uh, here's some more old refrigerators. Wonder what's in that. Been a day or two since that's been used. Well, let's go this way. There's Watch your step. Yeah. 
This must have been kind of a work area. These are working man's tools. There was an extra saw blade for saw mill. Whoa, guess what we got here? What? A safe. Man, that's going to be heavy. I'd almost bet you there ain't anything of real value in it, but... <coughs> they have a chain around it. Well, we'll figure a way to get this one open. You never know. This looks like it was a place where they can uh, store uh, fruit jars full of food. <coughs> So, uh, yeah, these are all concrete. You can see here concrete ceilings, concrete walls. See this? This is a, a rock building that they built these bunkers up against. And, uh... Okay, what's in here? Well, this looks like uh, more storage for valuable items. <laughs> Those jars there, those canner jars, almost look brand spanking new. <coughs> that looks like old file cabinets. I'm sure if we get into it, we're going to find a whole bunch of records and stuff. So, yeah. Well, this is what this here was. This was a Union 76. You'll see some more things there from a Union 76. It started off the way we understand as a, uh, let's go back this way, as a uh, general store, but then they became a Union oil jobber and eventually started selling gasoline. So anyway, we'll go down this row and see what we got. Well, those are axes and stuff like that. This is a little storage nook. Uh, wow. This looks like it could have been a bathroom. There you go. Ready to take a bath, Ma. Uh -huh. There's a sink. Man, look at all this junk. Old bottles and... Hey, there's a toilet come back in here a little bit and turn around and uh, oh gross I think it could use a little cleaning <laughs> wow well at least at some time or another they thought they had to have warm water to wash hmm. oh look at this little room man oh man oh man Look at the fittings and the jars. Hmm. Yeah, this is going to take an hour or two. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's keep them moving. Uh, watch your head. Ooh, here's another refrigerator. There's an old gas can. Yeah. See what's in this thing. Ah. Oh, jeez. Anything that you would need in the, at the medical industry, it's just a little seasoned. <laughs> There's some little. K.O. Pet Tate and all kind of cool stuff. Phew, man, that's a little bit stout. So anyway, wow, look at this room. Hmm. I heard tell that there was some old stuff down here that was from the very first antlers that was built. And this must be something that looks like it could have come out of that. Hmm. Let me take a look and see where this goes. 
little more junk. No shortage of lots of old boots. Well seasoned items. There's some more of your uh, old washer. Union grease. Well, we've seen this on the outside. This uh, this building is an old uh, stone house. It looks like they back plastered the inside, but really it's structurally pretty good. You got old gas cans and worst tub, wheelbarrow. That was a school desk probably. Some more uh, highfalutin uh, wash machines. Wow. Look at some of these boxes. This looks like it has an old, uh, maybe a Charlin pump or something. Hydraulic. But look at the box. Winchester trademark. Expanding bullet. 1000. Uh, silver speed, silver tip. 348 Winchester. So. Yeah. Well, there was a special kind of chair. I think that might have been for relieving yourself, but... Well, what do we got here? This looks like an old uh, upright pump. Oh, wow, look at this. Not very many of these around. That was the old 10-gallon pump upright pump that you pumped it up and then gravity fed yeah there's one of the covers maybe both covers huh there's a singer sewing machine there's a big old chopping block and all kind of stuff up above belts you name it Selling. I don't know what this came off of, but this looks like it was probably a front end off of uh, an old car. Looks like that was probably the grill. <laughs> now let's get out of here. It's kind of spooky. Okay. I'm heading out. Yeah, I'm feeling. Uh, I'm feeling cold drafts every once in a while, and it ain't windy outside, so I don't like that program. Watch your head and watch your step. Okay, we're almost there. Well, I'm glad to be out of there. I guess we will call them the dungeons because that's kind of what they're like. Yeah. Okay. Now we're going into the Oakland store. We've been in here before, and uh, my wife's done some cleaning since we uh, purchased this property. So it's coming along. Uh, it's uh, not quite ready to open. We've got a little ceiling work to do, but uh, we're up to the task. But it's like it was frozen time. Look at all the stuff on the shelves. Yeah. Oxidol, Ivory, Trend, Mr. Bubbles, Zud, Lux, Bell. Pretty uh, drift. Just some of the laundry detergents. Huh.
Look at the size of this cutting block. These were all the dry goods that they sold, shoes, hats, shirts, you name it, gloves. I could say the option was back then to... Get your shoes fixed. Yeah, to uh, travel almost 100 miles into Payson and uh, in a mallet and buy it there. So it was pretty handy in its day to be able to buy stuff without having to go clear into Payson. As you can see, we've added a kitchen. This is an old commercial ice box. Very unique. As you walk around in the middle is where you put the big chunks of ice. And on both sides inside is metal to keep it cool. This was in the store. At the time we didn't know what we were, the heck we were going to do with it, but it's turned out being a pretty excellent island for in the kitchen. Notice the 1940s sink. I remember when my grandma had these. Took us a while to find one, but we found it. Came from Montgomery Wards. The pendant lights are made of old headlights that my husband made. And we decorated with hubcaps and license plates wanted to tie it into the rest of the Hoagland store on it? Yep, it's up there. Oh. Here's the 70, Union 76 insignia right here. Well, that's probably enough for now. We are now walking in through the door into the area that was built in the 1940s as a feed store addition. Before that, 
the post office set in this spot. It was a wooden building. It, in the night, late 1930s, they moved the post office and poured concrete and built the feed store. That door that you see in front of you is the one that goes into the new addition. And this is now our living room. We are walking into the new addition from which, what used to be the feed store and is now our living room. As you can see, as we did the addition, we tied in the old steel along with a lot of wood, birch wood. I wanted it to tie into the rest of the store and somewhat feel like an old schoolhouse or what the old post office may have felt like. I've lined the walls with all the old newspaper articles that I found down in the dungeons dating back to 1929 to 1915 from when Bird takes off for the South Pole to the surrender of the Nazis, which was 1945. So as you can see, the halls are lined with the old newspapers, which was an amazing find. We added two bedrooms, a laundry room, and a bathroom. We use the old tin corrugated steel for the ceilings. And I found this pretty cool 1950s turquoise bathtub, stool, and sink, which I just had to incorporate into my design. So this edition was completed uh, at the end of 2022.